All right, so welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at LLMNR poisoning. Um, so pretty much I'm going to start working a lot more with Active Directory. And I thought, well, who's the best at Active Directory? Who's the best at teaching it? Stuff like that. That's TCM, right? Heath Adams, right? Um, for Active Directory stuff. So I started to think, like, okay, so how should I go about doing this? Because I plan on taking my PMPT at some point, probably um, middle of this year, middle to end of this year depending on when I can actually fit it in the schedule and stuff like that. So I thought to myself, like, okay, well, who, how, how should I go about doing this, right? So I went out of his page and downloaded his syllabus. Um, Evis, yep. So I went on the page, downloaded the syllabus, threw it onto uh, Cali Linux here, and I was like, all right, cool. Let's start going through the syllabus, right? Okay, so we got reverse shells versus bias shells. I talked about those, stage versus on stage, okay, gain root mess, but, you know, I've talked about a lot of stuff, right? I started going through this, and I was like, okay, cool. I haven't talked about really about information gathering or anything like that. Um, but really just started to think, like, okay, well, can I just kind of learn and teach at the same time, you know? Um, learn how to do it, teach how to do it at the same time, so you guys can see how how I'm doing it, stuff like that. Um, it may be different than what he's doing. I don't know. Um, I know that you can download or you can get his courses on YouTube, but it's not all of his stuff. I know that. Um, I don't have this course, so I don't know, I'm just going to try it, see what happens, okay? So I already made a server, 2019 server. This is 2019, as you can see, right? He's up and running and everything, and I have him just like within the uh, proxy chains class that I did. I just have him in the internal network. I also have my Kang Linux machine right now in the internal network too, on that network in the internal network. So you guys know I'm not doing anything with uh, proxies or anything like that here. Just going straight into it, NAT network, internal network. And then I have a Windows 11 machine. So I went to download another Windows 10 machine since the other ones I had were, you know, I was using them for try me, stuff like that, and they were a little bit messed up. So decided, all right, let's go download another one. You know, we'll just delete those, totally erase them and everything. And that's all Windows 11 was available for download. I was like, all right, cool, let's go ahead and download Windows 11. So I downloaded the VirtualBox one. Way easier than the other ones, than the other... Um, um, like to the twenty, the Windows 10 one. That's because it doesn't come as an ISO. It comes already as an OVA or whatever it is image. So you just double click on it, immediately you get straight uploaded into a uh, virtual box, and you have a Windows 11 machine. So it's pretty sweet. I mean, it was way easier. It was pretty awesome how it worked and everything. So I was like, oh, that. I mean, that works for me. You know, that that's super quick. Um, I thought that was awesome. So it makes life a lot easier. So I went ahead and did that. Got that Windows 11 machine up and running. All this is free. So every single thing on here is free, right? And then I made a um, domain server. So I have my server like right here, right? I threw some users in there. Okay, so if I go to tools, users and computers, I threw some users into here. Okay, I have Alice Wonderland and also Hatter Wonderland. Gave them some different passwords. And yeah, I mean, that's... About all I did. I also did went into Server Manager, file and, file and storage services, and created a share. Right, so I just created this quick SMB share, and that's really about it. That's really about all I did. Um, then I started to focus on LLMNR LL, poisoning. Now I've done this before within. Um, I did this before while going through I and E. I did this once. Uh, LLMNR poisoning. It was not working for me on this thing. I thought, okay, maybe it's because I'm using Windows Windows 10 at first. I was very first using Windows 10. Maybe it's because of that. Maybe it's because I'm using Server 2019. I tried Server 2016. I tried Windows 7. I tried Windows 11. I've tried every possible combination of everything. It's still not working for me. Well, then all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, when I was going through that course, I turned the SMB server off. I don't remember why we did that. Somebody could post why I did that. I could probably look up the course again, why I did that. But I remember we had to turn the SMB server off. So I thought, hmm, is it still off? So I wanted to open up Responder here and do a quick um, sudo nano. Responder.com. Okay. Go into Cali. Make sure SMB is on. Or else you are not going to gather any of the hashes. You're going to be sitting there forever trying to get hashes. That was a big problem for me, like right there. Once I, a big enough problem to where I got online and started to ask people, and I didn't get anything about it. Um, 
didn't get anything back on it. Finally figured it out, updated my uh, post, my original post to show that I figured it out. So in case anyone else has that problem, make sure that SMB is on, SMB server. So like I was saying, I was going through this guy and I was like, okay, I can learn and teach at the same time. Um, I could maybe do it once or twice. They come on here, do it a couple more times. You'll know, do it once or twice with you guys. Show you guys how I did it and everything. And my way might be different than Heath Adams' way. Uh, might be different than what you see online, some of that. I don't know. But, uh, things might be different. Like I said, I don't have the course. I have not taken this test yet. So don't expect some type of spoiler for the test or some type of, hey, knock on wood, questions, stuff like that. I, I don't know any of them. I don't plan on taking the test yet. I don't plan on taking the test till this is actually over with. This is my studying for the test. So we got LLMNR poisoning overview, right? So let's go ahead and look at LLMNR poisoning, okay? Uh, for LLMNR poisoning, we're going to use a tool called Responder. If I type in Responder and I hit Enter, it's like, hey, first off, this has to be run as, as root, okay? Sudo Responder, Enter. Hey, you're still messed up. We need an interface, okay? Okay, cool. Um, but what are we still doing? What are we even doing with Responder? Like, what does Responder even do, right? So let's go ahead and start to look at Responder like a little bit. What does it actually do? What is it trying to pull? Everything like that. What we're going to try to do is gather some NTLM hashes that we can then put in the um, hash cat to be able to crack. That's what our final goal is here. All right. So let's go ahead and look at um, LLMNR poisoning. All right. Go ahead and look at this. Change to English. And let's see what we can do here. So as you can see, I already opened one up because like I was saying, I was having a huge problem. I was not getting hashes back. Um, if you actually look at my phone search history, it was like LLMNR poisoning, LLMNR not getting hashes, LLMNR just, uh, just going on and on and on. Okay? But what's going to happen here is someone's going to be going to look for an SMB. Right? A user goes to look for an SMB. They spell the name wrong. Maybe they put in the IP address wrong. Something. The SMB does not exist. That share does not exist. Our machine that says, yeah, that's me, you know, I'll, uh, I'll log you into it, okay? A lot like what a, kind of think of it as, how I like to think of it, as how a, um, a uh, the Raspberry, or not the Raspberry, the uh, Wi-Fi pineapple, the Wi-Fi pineapple, how that kind of works, right? Something goes out and says, hey, they know who this is, and you're like, yeah, I'm it. You know, I'm not it, but I'll, I'll, I'll be Airport One, sure, why not, as long as you connect to me. And I, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I can be connected to the internet and you can go ahead and sur still surf the internet, but I'm going to see everything you do in the middle, you know. Um, so things like that. That's how I kind of look at LMR poisoning almost this. The machine's like, hey, does anyone know who this is? Yep, sure, I am, whatever you say. And then I'm like, yeah, as long as you send me your hash, you know, I'll be it. And it sends the hash out. It sends the hash to me, right? So you see how this could be a problem like a large organization? All right, um, I know that. You know, in, in my organization, just the other day, they were trying to get out a share, and the share that they sent out, uh, one of the, one of the uh, letters were incorrect. So as everyone's trying to get on this, you know, one of the letters are incorrect, so everybody could have fallen victim of this. Every single person there. You know, and that was a good thousand people. And I got that email. So, something like that, right? So, let's see what, I mean, you could also really go you could try to fish them even i mean you could try to make them smb server i mean you could really do a lot of stuff with this you know you can really get uh, creative with it but let's go ahead and start this up right so i have a windows on machine i have the server running i'm on that domain okay and everything so i'm on that domain we're good to go we're ready let me go ahead smb server is on on responder let me go ahead and open this guy up and let me start up Responder here. Let me show you what we're going to start up with Responder. If I type in Responder, Responder, tech I, all right, we'll do um, either at zero, and then we'll show, hey, actually, you know what? We're going to do Responder, tech tech help. And then we'll do Control Shift Help. We're going to show also why we're going to do either at zero. So, Control Shift Help, or um, tech tech help, right? We're going to a couple things in here. We can analyze it first and just see the types of requests, things like that, and not actually respond to anything. We can do something like that first. All right. Um, we could also return basic HTTP authentication. Now, something with this, as I was reading why my hashes weren't coming back, I did learn that IE11 
um, is much harder to do the HTTP authentication stuff with uh, because it has these different proxies in there, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we can uh, start the WPAD rogue, rogue proxy server, default value is false. Um, we can force a lot of hash downgrades for Windows XP and 2000. So we'd have to know, you know, what type of system we're working with there, right? Force NTLM basic authentication on WPAD.dat. You will see that more than once, most likely. As I was reading through the syllabus, you sh we should see that a couple times. All right. But uh, yeah, we're just going to try responder attack uh, I for the interface, right? Ethernet 0. Now, why am I using Ethernet 0? If I do an IF config, I'm on Ethernet 0 is the connector connect, network that I'm connected to in here. Right, for these guys, Ethernet 0. Um, actually, kind of hit enter. I know that uh, there is some sites where they're like, hey, put this behind it, put that behind it. I was going to try with just hitting enter. We're just going to try just straight out of the box. Hey, as you see, SMB server is on. We're going to try, yeah, straight out of the box. Hey, I want to just see, can I do this or not, right? Um, if we start to read through these sites and everything, they will give us like different ideas, like RDW. All right, something like that. <clears throat> okay, a lot of them seem like to use RDW. As I look in here for the TAC TAC help, W is for W pad, um, D, DHCP, and then R enables answer for net files, WR direct suffix queries. All right, um, so we're just gonna try it just straight out of the box. Hey, can we do this? Can we just throw this up there? And let's see if we can. So let me go into Windows. If we can't, then we'll add in some of the, you know, other arguments that I can take. So let's go ahead and do that guy and just put in a bunch of crap because he spells something wrong. All right, hopefully that's not actually a web page. And as you see, it's now poisoned it, right? It's saying, hey, somebody's doing something here. That's not real. I'm saying that's going to be me. Okay. Um, doesn't look like we're getting anything like that. So let's go ahead and try it with this. Because we should get it pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and try with RDW. Tac RDW. We can also do a V, I believe, to make it more verbose to see it like twice or whatever, something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and try that, like right there. Let's go ahead and try and make it more verbose. The more verbose, the better, right? All right, that one definitely, I definitely put a web page also. Bunch of crap, right? I even have a semicolon in there for some reason. So let's see what happens here. Oh, it's not working again for me. So I actually just did this a minute ago and actually got the response, but this time I'm not, which I think is kind of weird. It was actually I turned actually it was actually after I turned SMB server on that I got the response. Now I'm not getting the response, which that's kind of weird to me. Like right there, I also put in a web server though too. Let's try to turn zero zero thirteen, which is my guy. Okay, so we got enter network credentials, right? So we put that in, okay? Maybe I just couldn't take it because I had a freaking semicolon in there or something. All right. As you can see, we just dropped a whole bunch of hashes, right? Um, I do know that there needs to be some type of, you know, people on the network, stuff happening, things like that. It'll drop a lot more of this stuff, a lot more of the, uh, uh, this will work uh, more times than not. All right, but let's go ahead and just see if that was just a stupid problem by me. Let's try file SHRE. We forgot to put in the A or some crap like that, right? Let's see if I drop some stuff again. And we do. Okay, we drop it immediately for the file share one. There's file SHRE. Okay, and we, and we grab this, this guy right here, right? Let's go ahead and grab this hash now. And we can grab this hash. We can go ahead and crack this guy. Uh, we can crack him using Hashcat. That is the easiest way to do it. Um... The password for this one is not actually in rocky.txt. I thought it was. It is not. So I had to actually add it into the Windows rocky.txt one just to see, like, because after I did this, then the password went crack. I was like, oh, my God. You know, but obviously that all depends on the word list, right? So let's go ahead and let's go back to my Windows machine. We copy that guy. Let's go ahead and top of my Windows machine here, my actual real Windows machine. There we go. Oh, my God. There we go. And what's out there? Okay, let's go ahead and type in command prompt, right? Uh, can I get this guy any bigger? Actually, I'm pretty sure you guys can actually see that, huh? That's actually pretty big. There we go. Okay, cool. Control, scroll the mouse wheel up. CD in the OneDrive. 
slash desktop slash hashcat. All right, let me actually go ahead and put that in the hashtag real quick. So if I go into hashcat 6.2.4, um, let's actually make a new file, right? So we'll do a new uh, text document. Uh, we'll call this um, ntlm hash. All right, there we go. Control V, we'll put that guy in there. Save him, Control S, and we'll go ahead and run hashcat dot exe. Now for NTLM hashes, it's going to be a 5600, so tag M5600. All right, so tag M5600. We are looking at NTLM hash right dot text, and we're going to use Rocky dot text word list to go against him. So there we go. So hashcat using my GPU like right now, throwing it at it like heck yeah, let's freaking do this, man. All right. Um, just, yeah, just go. All right, and it cracked it, right? We, we cracked it, okay? So let's go ahead and see what it cracked as. And it cracked right there. My password won. Cool. We now have that user's password. From here, there's a lot of other things we can do. We can try password spraying, or excuse me, not password spraying, but, um, yeah, password spray. So we can use that password and just start spraying it all over on all the systems, see if, uh, that user is logged in at any other systems. We could try, we could try past the hash actually up here uh, with the hash, the NTLM hash that we got. Uh, should be right there, I believe. It's going to be that one. But yeah, we should just be able to try past the hash with that. We could, we now have this password, so we try to log in under SMB, things like that, or maybe PS exec. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. We could try going under PS exec. I mean, no point not trying, right, I guess. And this is just going to be real quick. We're just going to try to log in, see if we get anything. Um, I personally, I don't think we're going to. I don't think I even have the box set up to be able to do that. But we'll search for PSEZEC. We'll use 10. Show options. Set L host as 10.0.0.16, we believe it is. All right, yeah, 10.0.0.16. All right. Who's 19? Oh, yeah, it's going to be 10 0, 0, 19, I think, actually. 10 0, 0, 19. 10 0, 0, 19. Okay. We'll set our SMB user to, uh, what was it? It was hatter.wonderland. Set SMB pass. It was my password one. And we'll go ahead and run that. Yeah, uh, set our, oh, set our host to myself, set our host to 1013, set our host 10.0.0.19. We're going to run that. Um, yeah, I didn't think it would, but we tried. Um, we may have to, you know, we can also SMB domain. So set SMB domain to whatever the domain controller's name is, which I don't think we've actually pulled yet. OGC, so OGC.local most likely. We'll run that. Now, I haven't done anything with the firewalls or anything like that with this guy also. But it looks like that may, if I actually tear down the firewall over here, or maybe I have, I don't know, I don't remember. Do we have like the firewall up? Firewall. If I actually tear him down like real quick, since we're using interpreter, that's going to be, okay, that's all off. What about real-time protection? Yeah, manage settings. Turn that off. Yes, turn off cloud delivery protection. Uh, no. All right, let's go ahead and there we go. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, is that could it go through? Let's try to run it again. Wow, I actually did not think that would actually work. Um, obviously, I turned off a whole bunch of stuff, you know. But um, there are other ways, you know. We try to obfuscate that, things like that. But we, yeah, I mean, we got the password. We got in, get UID. We are NT authority system. I did not see that happening like right there. Let's go ahead and PS. We can try to migrate into something else here. Alright, we can see the maybe the C um, users EIR. Um, we got Hatter.Wonderland on there. Um, CD into uh, CD into Hatter dot Wonderland. Alright. And we just got, you know, stuff in here. CD is desktop. Obviously, we don't have anything in there like right now. But, you know, we could 
obviously where we could uh, start to enumerate this user, things like that. So I actually did not think that was going to work. I didn't know I had it set up like that. I did not actually set up anything else. I obviously did was take down real-time protection, the firewall, and that came right through. So obviously we use like PS Exec or uh, WMI, things like that, and that would work also. So locate PS Exec. Should be a python.py. There we go. Is that .py? I actually don't. For this one, like right here, I would really like. Okay, so we got domain, username, password, at target name or address, command or arguments if taxi is used to execute the target. So we could do like command.exe. Okay, so target, domain, username. So we got to do a. So we got to do a. Um, the domain first, which is. Um, you see that local domain slash username which is hatter that wonderland password my password one okay at the IP address ten zero zero nineteen and the default is command dot exe we just try like that is that gonna work all right. Yes, it did. DIR. I wonder if we can actually turn on that real-time protection again and see if this still works, huh? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and turn on that real-time protection now. In here. Um, firewall. Go ahead and go over here. Real-time. Yeah, turn on. Yes, please. Okay. So that's now on. All right, cool. And let's go ahead and try that one more time. Ooh, yes, that does work. I believe this one works in memory. No, WMI exec works in memory. That does work. Probably just because we're not actually sending a interpreter at it, huh? Um, and now we can really, I mean, we could add users. I wonder if we can do PowerShell in here. If we type in PowerShell and get PowerShell working? Yes, we can. So we could add users like right now, um, especially because if I do a, who am I? Right, I'm NT30 system. So I could turn on remote desktop. I could do whatever I want. Like right now, can I? I do Control Shift E, and I do a uh, M map on this guy, right? Tacky Tac 10019. We see I got 139, 445, 135. Let's try just 43389, right? Okay, that's closed. Now let's go ahead and look up a uh, Windows CLI command line interface. Uh, turn on. RDP. Turn on remote desktop with Windows CLI. As you can see, I've definitely done this before. Definitely looked at it. Enable remote desktop from command. Okay. Change the value to, uh, to zero. We can enable. Okay. Reg add key. Boom, boom. Terminal server. D0. And then that's to enable it, that D0. To disable it, we then do a D1. So let's go ahead and do a D0. And let's see if we can actually just um, exit up here, get back to C drive. Can we do that? Yes, we can. 3389 is now open. Now let's go ahead and do a... Hey, let's add a user. Add user, Windows, CLI. Alright, as you can see, I've also done this before. And this is all... The, I, did do, I did not just do this. This is from my time doing different exams, things like that. That's why all that stuff's clicked. And through also different try hack and everything too. Um, I like to get GUI interfaces. Net user, let's try uh, Ryan, right? And then a password. So I need a password, such as a uh, password. I still need to follow their password procedure. So let's do the same that password he has. Okay. Slash add. Okay. So let's go ahead and get back into PowerShell. Uh, can I do a net users? Can I do that? Is that like a thing? Net users, there's Ryan. Now we want to do is now we want to add Ryan into a remote desktop user and also an avid user, right? So there's that. And then I can add him in net user username. Boom, boom, okay, a few to allow you to change password. Restrict user, not change password. New administrator account. There we go. Okay. Net user, test user. 
just password slash add and domain. If you have privileges, add new user account system, you get an error like this. Okay. No, I don't want that. I want to how you create a new administrator account. First, we need to create and then add the administrator group. That's all I want to do. I want to add them to the administrator group. And I forget how to do that. Net local group administrators. So we can do a net local group. Is it local space group? Nope. Local group administrators. Ryan slash add. And then we also have a net local group remote desktop users, right? So, yep, remote desktop users, that should be a quotation mark though. So we'll do a remote desktop users, Ryan, slash add. Now what we should be able to do is do a Remina in the 10.0.0.19 and just be in mind, 10.0.0.19. And yes, and we can say Ryan, my PSINSSW0RD1. And we should have another user signed in. Do I sign in anyways? Yeah, sure, why not? Yes. And what we should tend to be able to do now, this is going to be asking him, hey, do you want to sign out or whatever? Um, no action will disconnect your, your session in 30 seconds. That's a big point. That's a big thing, like right there. Okay, so let's say I'm doing this at, you know, 7 o'clock at night. User's most likely not on. But if he was logged on, you know, or if he left his computer up and running or whatever, I just have to wait 30 seconds. I just have to hope that he's not on his computer for 30 seconds. That's about it. If you're doing your recon correctly and things like that, you'll know that he's not as computer for those 30 seconds. As I am drinking water also. I know some of the viewers would be very happy about that. Oh my god, it's not soda. He's drinking the water. <sighs> Alright, cool. So I'm now logging in. It looks like as Ryan. And since it's YouTube, all of you guys just clicked off this video because, dear god, you had to wait 30 seconds. <laughs> That's some like accept this stuff like that, but I can't really see it. So probably our desktop would have probably worked a little bit better for me. But you guys see that yep, I can now get in there and do everything I need to do, right? So that was fun. Um we could also upload files like right now. So we could set stuff at it, right? So if we had a virus that was obfuscated, we could get that up in there like right now. And it all started with someone typing in the wrong uh, share SMB, you know, try to go to the wrong place. Or, like my organization, someone sent out the email with the wrong SMB. And we just need one of those passwords, one of them to work, right? Um, and then from there, we can just start to just really just try other stuff and just really just start to break everything down. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun doing this. I had a lot of fun staying up. I learned a bunch because of that SMB server just did not want to work in the beginning so i learned a bunch doing it and stuff like that um but yeah hope you guys enjoy it let me know let me know if you want to see some more stuff like this i want to try to like i said i'm trying to go through the syllabus trying to learn everything i possibly can um especially before i leave since i do leave soon i already forgot what the thing was for events yep there we go try to learn as much as i possibly can so i got lmr poisoning Let's go ahead and actually highlight that. Let's say, hey, we're done with this. Can we highlight this? Highlight. Highlight text. Yeah, can I highlight you? Bam. Okay, that didn't do anything. What if I actually highlight? Highlight. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if I do that? Let's say highlight text. Yes, it does. Oh, that works. Highlight text. All right, cool. So we're done with that, right? We captured them with Responder, and we cracked them with Hashcat. Let's go ahead and highlight those two. Now we have poisoning defenses, SMB relay attacks. I mean, we did that too. We kind of just did that. Quick lab update. I don't know. Don't know what the quick lab update's going to be. Discovering host with SMB sign disabled. That's what the quick lab update's going to be. We need to disable SMB signing next, right? And then discover some hosts and things like that. So that'll be probably tomorrow in the next night's video or whatever. And that'll be uploaded next Friday. So we'll just, you guys get it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of work through this guy, just kind of going down him and seeing, you know, can, what can we do? What can I, uh, how much can I get done before, first off, I leave and I run out of internet, I don't have the internet for a couple months, and secondly, um, 
you know, how much can I possibly learn in the next uh, couple weeks here. So, you guys have a good one, and I will talk to you all later.